Hi, Todd Martin here. In this combined Tai Chi code, walking code video, we're going to continue our series and look at play the fiddle. We have already done parting the wild horse's mane, crane cools its wings, and brush knee. If you haven't watched those videos, please go back and check them out. Now we're gonna follow from brush knee into play the fiddle. You're going to hear the terminology torsional rotation and concordant rotation as I talk through the sequences of core movements for play the fiddle. I'm not going to describe them in detail again for this video. What I am going to do is place a written description that you can pause on as long as you need to get yourself familiar with them. So then as I describe them, as I go through the motions and play the fiddle, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Let's begin at the end of brush knee. I brushed down with my left palm and then strike forward with the right palm with the left palm down by the knee. That is the end of brush knee left. Now I'm going to do a half step up by flexing my right hip and changing the torsional rotation on the right, meaning my upper torso is turning to the left my lower torso is turning to the right. I'm going to reverse those two upper torso rotations. So I'm going to lift my right hip and turn my upper torso to the right and turn my lower torso to the left. That's going to result in the half step up. Now I'm going to shift my weight back to the right leg by reversing again, flexing my left hip and changing to torsional rotation on the right. So now my upper torso is turning to the left. I still have weight on my left leg. I have not gotten to empty stance yet. In order to go to empty stance, I need to take my upper torso and now turn it to the right. Now I'm fully balanced on my right leg and my left arm has gone up towards the front of my face. And now I'm going to finish play the fiddle by extending my left hip and turning the upper torso to the left. Now let me demonstrate play the fiddle from the side view, starting at the end of brush knee left. I'm going to flex my right hip with torsional rotation on the left. I'm going to flex my left hip with torsional rotation on the right. I'm going to turn my upper torso to the right. Now I have concordant rotation going clockwise and flexion of my left hip. Now I'm going to extend my left hip, which is that motion. And at the same time, I'm going to turn my upper torso to the left. And that's what brings the heel down forward of the body at the end of play the fiddle. Now I'm going to go through the names of the Tai Chi eight techniques that we use in the transition from brush knee to play the fiddle. At the end of brush knee, we're in push with extension of the right hip. We transition to split with flexion of the right hip. We shift back with split with flexion of the left hip. We change to empty stance with elbow strike with flexion of the left hip. Then we complete the movement with pluck with extension of the left hip. From the side view, we have push with extension of the right hip, split with flexion of the right hip, split with flexion of the left hip, elbow strike with flexion of the left hip, and finally pluck with extension of the left hip. Now let me relate the core movements and play the fiddle to movements that we would do in our normal everyday lives. Play the fiddle is a very important motion or technique that we use in our everyday walking technique. And you'll recognize it when you either step off of a curb or you are walking downhill. 
when we step off of a curb or we're walking downhill, the first thing we're gonna need to do often is get ourselves to a single leg balanced position where we don't want to take a full step striding forward and then step down because if you're on a steep hill, you're gonna be launching your center of mass out over the hill and then dropping precipitously down onto your leg. That can be dangerous, so what you're gonna to need to do is stop in this balanced position on one leg. We call that single leg balance, and coincidentally, that is going to look similar to that position that you're in before the end of play, play the fiddle, and it uses the same techniques or the same movements of the core. We're going to have, although we're going backwards here and play the fiddle, we're transitioning from split going backwards, torsion on my right, flexion of my left hip, to concordant rotation here, which is elbow strike, turning my upper torso and lower torso both towards the standing leg while I flex my opposite hip. That gets me to this single leg balance position. We're gonna do the same thing when we go forward to balance before we walk down a steep hill or off of a curb. We're gonna use split going forwards, flexing your right hip, torsional rotation on the left, rooting that left leg, and then you're gonna take the upper torso and turn it forward on the side of the swing leg. That's what's gonna bring your leg forward hanging in front of the body while you're balanced in single leg balance. I have an active lower abs on the left, which is tucking my pelvis on the left and rooting my left leg. My upper torso is also turning towards the left, keeping my center of gravity over this left leg and allowing my right leg to hang free. At that point, you're gonna do the same motion that you would do and play the fiddle, extending my right hip and using torsional rotation on the left, and your weight is going to lower in a controlled fashion, bringing the heel down to the ground. Showing you from the side view, from this balanced position, I'm going to extend my right hip. If I do that without doing any motion in the core, you're just gonna get this action. But I'm gonna extend my right hip and turn the upper torso forward on the left. That's going to bring my body slightly forward and start lowering the center of gravity and bringing the heel down in front of the body. And play the fiddle, we had that effect. When we are on a hill, it's gonna have the effect of lowering us to that next step on the hill as we go down. If we're stepping off of a curb, if you can imagine a curb here, that step is going to help us step down and off of the curb in a controlled fashion. The speed that you step will be proportional to the speed of the rotation of your core and the speed of the extension of your hip. You are not falling at the mercy of gravity.